Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good to see each and every one of you. Welcome to our guests today. Welcome to those joining us online. We are glad you could be at worship with us in this community as we worship our God. Just a few announcements that I'd like to bring to your attention. I would invite you to please uh, check your bulletins. There are more. I'm trying to keep it brief. Um, know that we are doing the Mountain of Food Drive uh, this month of April, and this is a way to bolster our um, St. Stephen's Food Pantry. Um, we had gone through the uh, pandemic, and uh, there were many grants and other things that have occurred, um, so there was um, some help with prices and food um, that has gone away. Uh, so we are back with our, our drive um, in hopes to bolster the ministry that we have. Um, so if you are able and willing, please um, donate and um, help uh, support this important, important ministry. Also, um, today we will be uh, again um, following the worship, uh, maybe at about 10.45 or so, we'll be meeting in Agape and watching the second part of The Law and the Prophets. It's a documentary film uh, naming um, sort of the history and how the conflict has been um, broiling um, with Palestine and Israel. And so, and it just brings us um, to some conversation today that is very complicated and hard. And now there are new um, elements happening um, and continue to happen. So our prayers and I think our conversation are important during this really difficult time. Uh, so join us in Agape today. There will be a light lunch following um, with the conversation. Um, and at this time, then, I will turn it over to Brent, um, the president of our congregation, with a few words. I heard a yay. I'm going to say it yeah. too. Yay! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to speak just a few minutes about this yellow form that you got uh, handed out to you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong but up until 2017, we were served by both the senior and associate pastors. Uh, in the seven years that Pastor Lisa has been here, she has served without an associate. This makes her upcoming sabbatical well-deserved. We thank you for serving our congregation these past years and hope that your mini sabbatical is spiritually and mentally satisfying and refreshing. As the saying goes, it takes a village, or in our case, it takes a congregation. No church is just a pastor. Many teams of people at St. Stephen's are actively living out our mission and values in the current ministries every day. We are a team. We don't want the congregation to just tread water till pastor comes back. With Pastor Lisa out from May 22nd through July 7th, we have seven weeks in which we are asking folks to take another step up. The ministry board has been planning for her time off by lining up pastors and guests for our worship services. Rebecca, of course, will help with key, uh, weekly worship coordination and social media tasks. And to clarify, Rebecca will be transitioning as our part-time worship uh, and technology coordinator, and we will be hiring a new part-time music and choir director. So thank you very much for all your work, by the way. An important aspect of daily, yeah. An important aspect of daily work is to ensure that our administrative and congregational care needs are properly addressed, and that is where your assistance will be welcomed. Our thought is that we will have a point person each week lined up to help coordinate any home visitations or other needs of our congregation. As well, we know that coordinated regular contact with Roxanne will be beneficial in order to help with day-to-day -day administrative tasks that may require her assistance. This time can be, this can be a time for fun, creativity, and real renewal for us as well as for Pastor Elisa. We have a couple of sign-up sheets where we have a sign-up sheet in the fellowship area, and if you have the time and desire to assist in these area, we would love to get your assistance during any point in this timeline of May 22nd through July 7th. I believe this can, this can be an enriching and spiritually engaging time for us here at St. Stephen's. 
If you are comfortable with a response, please add your form to the offering plate or in the offering boxes in back. There will be additional chances in coming Sundays, so thank you very much. To stand as you are able, face the font as we continue with our thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported. You are the author of salvation from this day and always. You are the river of life. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. From the waters in our tap to the rain and snow that nourish your creation, from this day and always. In the beginning, your spirit hovered over the misty waters of creation. You sheltered the human family through the flood and provided water from a rock to quench your people's thirst, from this day and always. On Jordan's banks, the Baptist cry announces your reign of peace come near. By Jesus' own baptism, the way of everlasting life is open to all people from this day and always. Come down, O love divine. Be our rock. Make us one. Shower us with life. now and forever. Amen. Let us sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, 
You are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to invite the children to come forward. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you today. Have you been out and about? Have you been playing outside? Enjoying a little of the sunshine? Without jackets? Yeah. It's pretty spectacular, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to do that today a little bit, so we'll see. Uh, but today, I want to talk a little bit about what is real and what is imagined. You know the difference? Yeah? Oh, so real is like something in life, not something just in your head. I appreciate that. That's a very interesting and good definition. All right, so I'm going to name some things, and then you tell me if it's real or imagined. Okay? You ready? All right. You didn't know you were going to school today, did you? All right. So, real or imagined? I have hair on my head. That's real? Yes, it is. Real or imagined, I am going to be President of the United States someday. <laughs> that hurts a little bit, but <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> What's that? I got an F minus at lunch with a little eyebrow raise, <laughs> okay. Well, we'll keep going, how about? So, real or imagined, my watch will tell me the correct time. Okay, real. All right, real or imagined, I have magic shoes that'll help me fly away. Imagine. Imagine, no hesitation there. You know, sometimes it's easy to know what is real and what is imagined, and sometimes it can be kind of hard. You see, in our scripture today, the disciples are left with a dilemma, real or imagined. You see, the resurrected Jesus showed up and came to them. And they knew that Jesus had died. So was he real or was he imagined? Jesus, is it real or imagined that Jesus is alive and with us right now? Any ideas? That can be harder, can't it? That can be harder. Just like Jesus' followers, sometimes there can be questions and wonderings about that, right? But he is asking the disciples of the day when he shows up to them to believe that he is very much real, that he is resurrected just as he had told them that would happen and that was promised by God. And that is for the disciples then and the disciples even now. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. The realness of Jesus, the resurrected being who is with us right now in this space. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus, who suffered, who faced the realities of the pain of this world and the injustice, and also how you overcame that, the impossible, and raised him from the dead. That gives us hope, and that gives us possibilities for new life again and again. Help us to believe. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. I appreciate it. Enjoy the continued conversation. You can head on with Miss Debbie. Or hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made the man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this. Perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer, Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him will purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, and he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. What a phenomenon! What an amazing sight! Joy enveloped all who saw it. How many here? saw the eclipse this last Monday. (laughs) Yeah, quite a few. You know, I have to admit, I went home for a late lunch and saw some of the gathering spots of the total eclipse on the news. There was one meteorologist reporting from, I think it was Vermont, where it was happening, and he was bouncing around like a giddy little kid in the candy store. It was almost too much. I'm like, yes, it is happening. That is cool, but call down a little, sir. Since the partial eclipse was happening here, I asked Greta to walk around the circle, our block, essentially, with the dog and me. The sun had dimmed at that point. I worked hard not to look by averting my eyes, trying to be good. Well, we're about two-thirds of the way around when we saw a group of our neighbors who had congregated and were talking excitedly. And I just hollered out in a friendly way, so enjoying the eclipse. And one said, yeah, have you seen it? And I nonchalantly said, nah. And she said, do you want to? As she handed me the cardboard glasses. And I was like, all right. So I put them on, turned and looked towards the eclipse, and in that moment, all I could get out was a little whisper, wow. It was beautiful, mysterious, and so clearly happening. I finally could understand what all the fuss was really about and a little grace for that meteorologist. (laughs) Standing there in quiet amazement and unexpected joy. This was a shared and communal experience by many around the United States and in other countries. Well, in today's gospel, we now join Luke in the great phenomenon of his version of the awe-filled, joyous, and mysterious resurrection story. So our story today is a continuation of that first Easter day. There was a flurry of activity and quite the buzz beginning early that morning. The women came to the disciples and reported seeing the empty tomb and the sighting of an angel with the message that Jesus was raised from the dead. 
The disciples at that point thought it was an idle tale, or a better interpretation for grown-ups is it was complete BS. That's not the interpretation. They didn't believe it at all to be true. Not at all. Well, later that day, Jesus' disciples are gathered in a room together in Jerusalem. Cleopas and another disciple had run all the way back from Emmaus to share their astounding experience with the risen Jesus on the road to Emmaus and how they had shared a meal with him and their hearts began to burn and they finally recognized him. And now, in the midst of their storytelling, Jesus suddenly appears to all of them in their midst, and they, um, they aren't sure what's going on. Could have Jesus, who died on the cross, really be present? Are they really seeing him now? It seemed impossible. It, it must be a ghost. Luke tells us that the disciples are frightened and confused and filled with questions. They have to confront their doubts and disbelief. Their heads and their hearts both need help. Jesus, sensing their fear, assures them that he is not a ghost and shows them his hands and his feet. Now, the Greeks' notion of a ghost was an immortal, indestructible, disembodied soul. So Jesus is not a ghost. Ghosts do not have hands and, or feet. They do not have skin, and they cannot be touched. The disciples' then response to this is both joy and disbelieving, all at the same time. So Jesus takes it further. He shows a very physical trait by eating a piece of fish. Then he follows up with a Bible study, opening their eyes, opening their minds, their hearts, so that they can see more clearly what he had taught them while he was still with them, which is now a reality in front of them. Jesus then connects his story as the suffering and resurrected Messiah to, through the scriptures. He also ties the early church's story to his story through the scriptures. And by doing this, he emphasizes the truth of the resurrection and the importance of God's plan for redemption. The revelation helps the disciples then understand how God's past, present, and future work to all together for salvation and for healing. You know, like those first disciples, the evening Jesus appears to them. People throughout the centuries, including today, have been skeptical asking questions about God. Is God real? Was Jesus truly raised from the dead? What do I believe? These questions are important, and it is okay to ask them. Because if our faith is stripped of all wonder, we are left with merely a set of theological claims that we have to then go on to defend. Our posture towards God and towards each other uh, would become closed off as we hold tight only to our answers. When we speak of resurrection, we're speaking about a profound mystery. Not for one moment can any of us claim to fully understand or to have a theological monopoly on interpreting the empty tomb. The only posture really any of us can have is to assume in this face of such a remarkable story is a posture of humility. Author, priest, theologian Richard Rohr writes, 
The resurrection is not a miracle story to prove the divinity of Christ, something that makes him the winner. It is a storyline that allows us all to be winners. All. No exceptions. There's no eternal death for anybody. All are invited to draw upon the infinite source, the infinite mystery, the infinite love, the infinite possibility. The resurrection is the new shape of reality of this world. It's filled with grace. It's filled with newness. We experience the resurrection by living connected to God. There's no other way. Resurrection happens every time, then. We love someone even though they were not very loving to us. At that moment, we have been brought to new life. Every time we decide to trust and begin again, even after repeated failures, at that moment, we've been resurrected. Every time we refuse to become negative, cynical, hopeless, which is so easy to do in these days, we have experienced the risen Christ. We don't have to wait. Resurrection is always possible now, even. The resurrection starts with Jesus dead and buried and ends up with God uh, in God, with Jesus alive and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. God does the impossible in the face of suffering and death. Christ is no longer bound by earth's limits, but radiates God's own love. The resurrected Christ then is present in word and sacrament, in faith communities gathered like we are today, and in all of creation. This grace is the witness. Resurrection pulls us into the future, following Jesus on the journey, following Jesus on the way to proclaim and witness to God's unstoppable and unconditional love. Resurrection invites us to look forward, to lean into and participate in God's dream of healing and wholeness for all creation. It invites us to ask, where is God sending us next? Who is Jesus leading us to? What, like Jesus, will we carry forward with us? As Emmanuel Cardinal Suard says, to be a witness does not consist in engaging in propaganda, nor even in stirring people up, but in being a living mystery. It means to live in such a way that one's life would not make sense if God did not exist. You know, after my neighbor extended the glasses, invited me to see the eclipse in its full grandeur, the next thing I did, without asking my neighbor's permission, mind you, was I took the glasses off and I extended them to Greta and asked, do you want to see? From the beginning, Luke has been clear. This work that he has written is a testimony of faith, a way of seeing, to inspire, to engender faith in those who will hear and read his account. Having witnessed, one may believe. Having believed, one may follow. Having followed, one may proclaim, demonstrate, and live in hope of this mysterious resurrection life. It's a progression worth repeating again and again. May our hearts and minds be open 
and our eyes see so that we too can be witnesses of these things. Let us now continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he comes to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring faith forth all life on earth. Calm storms bring water to parched places and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines of anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially Gregory, Dan and Maria, Anton and John and Marina, Ali and Oleg, and all in Ukraine, and all in the Middle East. Marsha, Kent, Vicki, Dick, Phil, Jane, Hazel, Bob, Ken, Lorraine, Greg, Angela, Nikki, and the family and friends of Dave Dohler. God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community, and hold us close as we offer the prayers of our hearts, out loud or in the comments of our live feed. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died especially Dave Dohler, as we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take time and share Christ's peace with one another. You may be seated as we continue with the offering.
risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. From the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup, Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your loved ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All is now ready. You may come forward as the ushers help guide and direct you just as a reminder, we have two continuous stations. You come up the center aisle, receive the bread and wine or grape juice, and as you head back to your seats, there will be uh, two empty trays on either side of the pews. But truly hear this. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. We are all welcome at God's table, and here we are met. God's grace is for all. God's love is for all. No exceptions. So you are invited. This meal is for you.
Please stand as you are able. Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope be with you today, tomorrow, and always throughout your whole life, again and again. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thank you, God. Alleluia.